if we go to pick up the bow, maybe two of the bows, this one here, we save the game and we leave. When we come back into the game, the bows are now gone and they appear in the inventory. Hey there, I'm your host Lesawi and this is part 26 of our inventory series. In today's video, we will be saving and loading the actors from our level. So let's begin. Let's start by going to the content drawer, save system folder, and in here we want to go into structs and let's create a new structure. So we'll go to blueprint, structure, and let's call it S underscore actors added. Um, let's save it and open it up. So in here, I just want to say actors added. And this will have a type of actor, object reference, or no, class reference. We want a class reference in here. And then for the transform, so the location of this actor, tran transforms, we'll make this into a transform, and this will be an array. And let's save that. Next, we'll go ahead and right click and go to Blueprint class, and we want to create a new save game uh, blueprint. So we'll call it SGB underscore level data. Let's open that up. Inside here on the variables tab, we want to add a actors, actors removed variable, and this is going to be of type actor, if I can spell actor, soft object reference. Now this um, basically refers to an instance object of type actor, which may or may not be loaded. So that's what we want. Now for our other one, we'll do actors added. Now this is going to be that structure we made. So S underscore actors added. And there we go. Let's um, compile and save. Next, let's go back into the structs and we want to open up S underscore game data. Now in here, we'll add in a new variable called level data. And in here, we'll just call it SGB underscore oh, level data. And let's save that. Next, we'll go ahead and open up our Blueprint interface. And in here, let's create a new function called save level data. And let's also give it a category. We'll call it level. Um, just like that, let's compile and save. Next, let's go ahead and open up our game mode. Now this we can find in third person, blueprints and third person game mode. So just like we did very similar with our game instance, we want to do the same in the game mode for our level data. So for that, we can go to class settings, go to implemented interfaces and add in our BPI underscore safe system interface. Once we compile and save, we get those options on the side here. So um, let's begin with our universal and we have load game data. So when we do this, um, let's do get current level name. So this will give us a print string of the current level name. Let's promote it to a variable called level data. And we'll do does save game exist. And we'll check for this, of course. Then we'll do a branch. And if it's true, we'll load game from slot um, regular. And again, the name can come from the level data in here untrue and then we just cast to the save game blueprint as we do and we promote it to a variable sgb underscore level data now in the case that it does not exist we simply create the save game object and in here we select our sgb underscore level data and just promote it again to your variable here. That's all we got to do. So let's um, compile and save. Next, let's also get a event begin play. And this essentially is like an event initialize in our game instance. Here, we just want to do load game data. And you want to make sure it's not your save system, but it's your third person game mode. It's the game mode that you're making this um, function have the logic in. So this one here. 
Next, let's go to get game data, open this up. And in here, we just want to grab our save game level data, make. And because we do not have the player data in here, we just put in our level data and we hide. And let's compile and save. Next, let's go ahead and do the save game data. So in here, what we'll do is we want to get the level data. We want to get the level data name and do save game to slot. So we have the slot name and we have the save game object. And that's pretty much it. Let's compile and save. Next, we want to go ahead and take care of actually saving the level. So on the very left hand side, when we have universal, we want to go to level and we have save level data. So let's double click on that. In here, what I want to do is I want to call this blueprint here. So we can do save game data. And again, make sure it's your third person game mode. And let's um, create a new function, which we can call get actors removed. And in here, I want to get my save game level data. We want to do actors removed. And we'll do a for each. Oops, can I not? Oh, this needs to be an array. So um, if we go back into our save system, uh, to do, do save system level data, this here needs to be an array. So let's compile and save it. Let's go back. This can now do a for each loop like so. And because it's a for each loop now, what we can do is we can do a resolve, soft reference. Now we have this actor and we can destroy this actor. Like so. And uncompleted, we'll just do a return node. Uh, there we go. And let's compile and save. For our next function, then let's go ahead and call it get actors added. So um, let's go ahead and do again level data, do get actors added. Um, we'll break this open, and I made a mistake yet again. Yes. So in here, then we want the actors to also be an array. So we'll go back in here, or not here. We need to go back into the structure. Actors added. And this needs to be a soft class reference, first of all, and needs to be an array. So let's save that. Now we can fully exit. We don't have to go back there anymore. So now we can do a for each loop like that, and let's connect it to the start. And from the array element, we can do resolve soft reference. Now we have the class reference. And if we have the class reference, we of course can do a spawn actor from class, this being the class. And boom, we just spawned in our actor. Now the transform will do a get a copy of the index. So each array or each actor is going to have a transform now. This will go in here. Collision, you, I always want to spawn it, so always spawn ignore collisions. Um, and let's do a return node at the very end when everything has been completed. And I'm happy with how this looks, so let's compile and save. With that completed, then let's go back into our load game data. And if the game data does exist, what we want to do is we want to get the actors added first. And then we want to get the actors removed. And that's us done in this blueprint. Let's compile and save. So I just realized that I made a mistake. I've been doing this code in the third person game mode while we already have our own game mode already existing in here that we made earlier. Now, this is not an issue. Um, simply, if that's the case, we won't be using the hero game mode anymore. Go to settings, world settings, and in the world settings, on your game mode override, just switch from a hero to third person and just make sure you change the controller accordingly as well. So hero controller and everything else should be the same. Otherwise, you can just copy paste the code and put it into your hero game mode if you want. Next, then let's go into our items. We need to populate these arrays. So we'll go into our inventory system. 
items and our item base. In here then, on the event graph, we'll do an event destruct. And from here, I'll do get game mode. And this is precisely where I realized the issue. We'll do a cast to third person game mode instead of hero game mode this time. And just like that, we'll do get the level data, uh, which I don't have. Third person game mode, do we not? SGB, oh, we do. Level data, and we'll do get actors removed. And we want to add a unique, like so. And what are we adding? Well, we'll do get self reference. And if you take this node and plug it in here, it should resolve by itself. So that's us done here. Let's compile and save. Next, let's go into our inventory component. And in here, we want to update our drop from inventory function. So let's go and find it. We have drop from inventory. Perfect. Inside here, we'll go ahead and do get game mode and we'll cast to our third person game mode. We'll go ahead and do SGB to get the save level data. We'll get the actors added and we'll break the structure open. And then we can do an add, just do a regular add and do a regular add for transforms. Now your actor class reference will come from the item. So we can just steal this. We get the item ID, item data, we break that open and we get the item class. So control C, control V, and this will resolve itself in there. And then for the transforms, we simply go at the very back of the spawn actor to get actor transform. And that's us pretty much done. Let's just aim that correctly in there. And yes, that looks okay to me. So let's uh, compile and save. Next, let's go ahead and open up our function library. So we'll go to our save system, um, BPFL, save system, and let's create a new one called save level data. In here, what we'll do is we'll get the game mode and do save level data message. So with that done, lastly, we need to include this in our save system. So go to wherever you're actually saving the game. In my case, it's the hero controller. We're pressing the Z key, saving the player data. And then we'll also save the level data as well. And let's compile and save and give this a quick test. So just before running this, I've cleared the saves. So let's hit play. And we have nothing in here. If we go to pick up the bow, maybe two of the bows, this one here, we save the game and we leave. When we come back into the game, the bows are now gone and they appear in the inventory. So this is it for the video. In the next episode, we will be saving the container data. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, leave a like. And as always, happy developing.